Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number five. Cinco. Yep. So this week we're going to be talking about... Uh, we were recently on a podcast, a much more established podcast, Sports Meets Beer. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about them. Uh, we'll talk about landing Panarin possibly. Uh, it's kind of a hot topic this week. Very good. And we'll also be taking, uh, having our take on something we call swag intel. It's kind of like show and tell. And then the return of story time. So, uh, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, wait, I'm gonna let you finish. But episode number three was one of the best episodes of all time. Of all time. <laughs> So, uh, in, in honor of uh, episode five, which I guess is the five years would be the wood anniversary, so this could be the wood episode, I suppose. Um, where wood what? I don't know. <laughs> would not have started five episodes ago. Huh, I don't know. Right. Anyway, sure. Uh, so, in, in honor of um, this this episode number five, we actually kind of just realized that nobody knows who we are or why they should be watching us so right um we thought we thought maybe we would just spend a little time talking about who we are and um why, why you should watch us so. sure yeah okay um who, who are we <laughs> i'm aaron okay i'm paul uh let's see we've been sharks fans since uh the sharks have started yeah um, we talked about going to the Cow Palace when we were younger and, and whatnot. So, yeah, we were there. How about how about this? How did you get into them at first? Oh man, I mean, I played roller hockey um, at, at a really young age, and I'm not sure if that really started around the same time that the Sharks uh, were a thing. But um, I was just always into hockey, and uh, when the Sharks became a team, um, you know, being in San Jose, obviously, it was like the biggest thing for me. Mm -hmm. I think before that, I might have been a um, I wasn't a Boston fan, but I remember my sister bought me a Boston Bruins jersey. and <laughs> Randomly? Uh, yeah. Nice. And it was funny because I actually had a trip out to Boston oh. at one time for, for work. And I asked them, hey, is it possible for me to get some tickets? And they, they got me some tickets. And Wait, who's they? Oh, I'm sorry. The people work? from work. Yeah, yeah. They, they actually got me some tickets. And I was able to wear my Boston Bruins jersey for the first time in a <laughs> meaningful environment. So <laughs> and it still fit. It still fit. <laughs> <laughs> she bought me a pretty big jersey. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But uh, how'd you get into it? Uh, well, we played a lot of video game yeah. hockey growing up uh, back on the <laughs> Sega Genesis days. Yep. Uh, my cousin had Sega Genesis. Mm -hmm. um, like, he, I think he was one of the first ones that had it. Oh, yeah. uh, and he had the original NHL, like the NHL PA, oh, okay. I think it was. <laughs> I think that was the first first uh, EA Excellent. hockey game. Uh, the one where you bleed if you hit the guy too hard is the only one that you can actually have blood. You can draw blood. It's a featured in uh, the movie Swingers. Where, oh, is it really? Where, um, uh, I forgot who it was. Gretzky gets he takes out Gretzky and makes Gretzky bleed and he has to leave the game. Anyway, it's a great scene <laughs> in the movie. Um, anyway, that kind of got me into it along with, you know, it's a new team. is mm -hmm. exciting. and uh, But the video games helped me learn the rosters yeah. as a young kid. Um, but, yeah, we used to play that. We used to play yeah a lot um playstation one i, I do remember a, a lot of nickel city trips as yes. well if you remember the there was a three on three i think it was uh it's two on ice. two really but oh yeah open, open ice, ice. Yeah. yeah um quick shout out two to, on two or three on three yeah, the goalies the goalies <laughs> yeah uh quick shout out to uh, bay area hockey repair uh essen um because they actually have one inside of their shop we have um, beaten that and dominated people in that game for a long time yeah, many years yeah it was it was pretty and awesome. we'd always play it's chicago which is sad. Yeah, it was like Chelios was on the team, probably Ronick or something. Uh, and Belfour was in goal, oh, I think. There yeah, you go. yeah. That's why I think the main reason we picked him because they had the, <laughs> the best goalie in the game. Yeah, and they sucked. <laughs> but like, okay, so why why us? Why are you guys watching us? Right. Um, I the short answer is I have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, really, it, we're we're just we're just Sharks fans is really what it comes down to. We're not analysts. We're not professionals. We're just the whole premise of this show is supposed to be talking with three friends, right? Me. Aaron and you guys yep and um, that's why we, we try to make you part of it um, on social right Twitter Facebook Instagram discord reddit all those different areas where we can talk with you guys mm -hmm. um, because this is supposed to be like a conversation between you know three friends and um, obviously we can't talk to all of you guys directly but uh, <laughs> we talk back and forth and we take your feedback and yeah that's kind of what the whole premise of the show is so um, yeah just basically friends talking yeah. yeah, yeah, we're seeing a lot more feedback lately on yeah. all the different social media <laughs> things that we're on. It's a lot of fun to keep yeah. track of, but uh, we definitely will respond to everybody and um, 
we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, That's absolutely, great. yeah. And uh, the, the other question, I don't know that I've, I've actually personally gotten, but I can imagine this running through most people's minds when they start watching the show, especially maybe a first time viewer, is um, what is with the openings? <laughs> like why, why is Paul always doing something stupid <laughs> in the opening? Uh, it was just something that we decided we wanted to do, um, just kind we? of. Okay, it's something I decided I wanted to do, <laughs> and uh, and he went along with it. Yeah. So uh, it, it just basically it, my way of trying to keep the opening loose and get us kind of into it. And um, I just like messing with you. <laughs> so he I, basically starts to show off with something that I have no idea what he's going to ask me or do. Hence the weather question earlier yeah. and whatever else. Yeah, it's 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 not even necessarily I'm asking him to to kind of react to it, but I just I want to throw him off and just do my own thing and. So that's why we have the strange openings every time, and hopefully you guys like it. But uh, if you don't, doesn't matter. I'm still doing them. So <laughs> anyway, uh, nice. yeah. Just anyway, that's we just want to talk a little bit about you know who we are, and and from there, I guess we'll jump right into the next part here with uh, sports meets beer. Sure. You, yeah. Our friends uh, Ben and Brad yeah. up uh, in Sonoma County. They they've done a podcast now for almost two years. I think a year mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, called Sports Meets Beer, and they talk about sports, they talk about meat, and they talk about beer. It's pretty straightforward. It's a brilliant yeah, name. <laughs> no, so, no question. There. So Ben works in the beer industry. I don't know if he wants me to tell him exactly what sure. his job is, but he works in the beer industry, has for a long time. Uh, Brad owns a couple restaurants and a mm -hmm. pub up in Sonoma County, um, so he knows the meats very well, yeah. and they both are big sports fans, so they talk a lot of various sports. Brad is all about the meat, let me tell you. And it's delicious. <laughs> it is phenomenal yeah <laughs> um uh they had gotten a few questions from their fans up mm -hmm. north about sharks hockey and they brad knows a little bit about it but he wouldn't call himself an expert and ben knows nothing about hockey which is great because <laughs> i love explaining the game of hockey yeah. to new people so it's a lot of fun for me so uh paul and i called in on the show uh and i think it's gonna be airing on wednesday so probably cool. today when this yeah. comes out yeah. um so you'll be able to listen to us if you want. Uh, it's a short 15 minute segment mm -hmm. and um, we'll plug that for you guys and we'll send you out the link for it. Uh, but anyway, I don't wanna give away everything we talked about, but yeah. they want us to discuss a couple of things. Yeah, they, they had us talking about um, some things we've already talked about, but um, it's kind of nice to recap. And especially for the folks who listen to Sports Meets Beer that don't watch us, um, you know, give them a little taste of what we're all about and the information that they were looking for. but. Uh, we know we did talk about the Tavares situation. We mm -hmm. did talk about, um, you know, no movement uh, really on the free agency front. Uh, if that was or was not a bad thing necessarily, right? Yep. Um, what other topics do we? we uh, Joe Jumbo. Thornton. Yeah. yeah, I want to know about Thornton and how he was going to recover from his mm -hmm. knee surgeries and what to expect yeah. from him in the future. Yeah. So it was it was a lot of fun uh, talking with those guys and you know especially you know talking to a crowd that maybe isn't too in tune with what the Sharks are doing or hockey in general. Uh, being able to explain that to him, so that was that was definitely a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, hope to do it again. Yeah, maybe we'll have them on our show at some yeah. point if we get you know popular enough. To <laughs> invite them on here. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they said they have faces for radio, so right. or faces for podcast. Yeah, they only do a podcast, so you won't be able to see <laughs> them or us. But uh, yeah, but yeah, give them a follow. Uh, listen to them on on I guess on Stitcher and wherever else. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll send you out all their info. They're on Facebook and all that too, so you can mm -hmm. figure out where they're doing their podcast out of. And yep give them a, f a good follow. If yeah. we have them on the show, I think what we'll do is we'll just blur their faces out so yeah. that they don't have to worry yeah. about being on camera. Yeah, if, if you like Bay Area sports, if you like beer, if you like meat, or if you like one or all mm -hmm. three, you uh, should definitely give these guys a follow. And if you don't like any of those, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Why are you watching us? <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> so in and, and talking with the guys from Sports Meets Beer, um, we were talking about John Tavares, mm -hmm. but there's another hot player, um, big hot topic that people are asking about in and, the news yeah yeah lately. and, and you, you wanted to talk a little bit about it so. uh panarin panarin is uh one of the hot topic guys right now that mm -hmm. this last week and the week before because uh he just hit the news for giving an ultimatum to his gm i guess yeah uh, he was in france and met with them and said look if you're going to trade me i want you to do it before september 12th 13th 13th yeah. um which kind of comes across as a i don't know selfish thing to do in a yeah, way. Yeah. But I get his point. His point is he wants to focus on hockey. He hates the mm -hmm. business side. So that's when uh, training camps start, yeah. essentially, for Columbus. And so if he's not traded by Columbus, he wants to stay and focus on Columbus and stay there for the year and not have to worry about this whole off-season business. Right, right. Makes sense. To me, it makes sense. Yeah. That's still a good amount of time 
It's a month and a half away. Well, and the other way people are spinning it too is that he's he's actually trying to do the right thing. He's trying to give them the heads up that he doesn't want to be there and that they should be trading him or at least looking for him, right? Right. Um, as opposed to a situation that, you know, like John, John Tavares, for instance, uh, he said, you know, he's not planning on, doesn't want to be traded. They don't want to trade me. I don't want to go anywhere. And then the end of the season comes along and he doesn't resign with the Islanders. He ends up going to Toronto. Well, I think the Islanders probably probably would have liked to have been able to trade him and get something back. But mm -hmm. I think Panarin is at least giving them that courtesy of saying, you know, I really don't want to be here. Um, as much as that that doesn't float with the fans, right? You know, that's the problem. What what if he's not traded yeah. by then? I mean, it's going to be like the Duchesne situation when he's in Colorado and mm -hmm. he wanted out, and it just dragged and dragged until he's finally traded to Ottawa. Right. Um, I, I could see something like that happening with Columbus because when a GM is public and says this guy doesn't want to be here and I want to trade him all the teams are, are gonna short sell yeah. like crazy they're gonna try and get a good deal because they mm -hmm. know that his hand is tied behind his back and he right. has to move him so what in response to that what a lot of GM's do I mean you're seeing this in Ottawa with Carlson um, they like to leak information or have people leak information saying oh you know there's two or three teams interested in 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 this situation and interested in Carlson uh, and we are seeing it with Columbus too. Because mm -hmm. Columbus, you said you saw the Kings were supposedly interested. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess there was a, a list. Um, I mean, who knows about the source really? Right. But uh, uh, supposedly it's someone from Columbus um, media, one of the beat writers or reporters or something like that in, in, in Columbus, who had said that in, he's interested in, in being shopped to LA, which would suck. Um, yeah. <laughs> especially when they got. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk yeah. out there. You throw Panarin on top of that as well. Two that, Russians. Yeah. I mean, that might work well for them. Center it off of uh, Kopitar. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, <laughs> so with with um, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? What other teams are? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so L.A. being one team. Um, then there was I think the New York teams. Um, he had said uh, he was interested in being traded to, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I would think that you'd want to go to a much better team than. The, the Rangers or then the Islanders, especially Tavares just left the Islanders. I mean, there's they're kind of light out there, so maybe he wants to be the guy, but he's kind of the guy in Columbus he's right now. So Columbus, you yeah. know, I guess it's just something about Columbus that he he didn't really care for, maybe as a maybe city. He just doesn't see a future. Yeah, there. Who knows? Could be. I don't know. Strange, um, strange situation. But I mean, coming from Russia, you don't much don't know much about the yeah. United States, and you're playing in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> It's like going to Siberia in Russia. I don't know what the comparison <laughs> would be, but it would it wouldn't be fun. Yeah, that's so that could be part of it. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I don't know. It's a strange situation, and um, it's one of those things where you know he's kind of forcing their hand. Like Aaron said, if they don't if they don't trade him before the deadline, his deadline, not the trade deadline, before his deadline, September thirteenth, then he's essentially saying, I don't want to sign a long long term contract with anybody so yeah. i'll play out my season with columbus but then i'm a free agent after that you're not you're not gonna ha well you can trade me but you're not gonna get what you want because the way that it works is another team is gonna want that player for a longer period of time not just as a rental if he's on his last year mm -hmm. and they can make it to the trade deadline another team is gonna say well i'm not gonna give you everything that you want for this player i don't care how good he is because there's no guarantee he's gonna resign with me so i think what they're looking for now is panarin is saying at least that he wants to be signed by another team before the September 13th deadline, yep. which is actually kind of nice if you think about it. For a team that wants to get Panarin, if he waits till free agency, you sign him seven years, right? Right now, if you sign him before the September 13th... Anybody trades for him. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can do an eight-year extension because yeah. he's your player. That means you have him for nine years instead of for seven years. So that's actually pretty good deal for for both parties but he's only played the nhl three seasons right he's and do you really want to give somebody nine years how much he's is only he going to command seasons? how much money is he going to yeah. get it's going to be a lot of money yeah. probably upwards to nine to ten million dollars mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less but let's let's uh we'll look at some stats right now real quick and i want you to i'm just going to compare two players sure uh first player played 243 games over the last three seasons Mm -hmm. uh, scored 88 goals, 145 assists for 233 points. The second player over that same time frame, the last three seasons, played just a bit of what, six games less. Uh, 98 goals, 122 assists for 220 points. 13 points less. Right. One of those is John Tavares. 
<laughs> one of those is Panarin. So this goes to show you. Oh, and Panarin is the first one. Yeah. He scored 13 more points than Tavares did yeah. in, in six more games. So um, granted, two of those seasons, he was with Chicago playing with Patrick Kane. Right. But it, his best season was last season. Exactly, yeah. In, in Columbus. So those people who say, oh, he was with Patrick Kane. Yeah. Sure. But he didn't need him in the in last year. He was in Columbus. Yeah, and I think last year he, it was uh, 82 points in 81 games, I think is what it was. Yeah. So he's he was a point, point a game for, player. Yeah. And, and he's not playing with, I mean, no. again, I don't like saying no disrespect because right. then you come back and say disrespect him. But um, <laughs> no disrespect to Columbus. Disrespect to Columbus. <laughs> um, they don't really have, the, the next closest forward was like 25 points away, I think is what it was. Yeah, so it was something ridiculous yeah. like that. And, I mean, he, he's basically the guy on that team right now. He is the guy. So, um, I mean, comparing him to Tavares, Tavares isn't exactly the guy in Toronto. He's got other guys surrounding right. him. But Panarin's doing it with no one around him. And he was doing it with, with Kane on his line when he was in Chicago. But you can't really use that and say, well, that's why. Because you're looking at him last season in Columbus, and he was point a game player that's well, look at look at Kane's numbers after he left yeah so who was helping who no exactly and if you take a look at the amount of assists that um that Panarin had yeah yeah sure Kane's burying him but I mean he's he's actually a pretty good playmaker I didn't realize well a couple things first of all for the Sharks he's a pretty good fit left winger right-handed shot you've mm -hmm. talked about uh Joe Thornton loving right-handed shots yeah and um, yeah, you made a Chichu of fifty six. If goal you've scorer. ever, yeah, <laughs> and where's make, Chichu now? <laughs> yeah, you can make my two year old son a thirty goal scorer. <laughs> so uh, I mean, a guy like that. I mean, you, I think you've got. We'll probably link a, a video of his highlights, and and we've seen um, a lot of really insane goals. Um, times where he's charging the net. I was telling you earlier, he was charging the net real hard, and he just slams it through the net. You've mm -hmm. seen like a Brent Burns one timer from yep. you know the low slot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's also the, one of the things that I noticed on that video was how good of a playmaker he was. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite realize. I thought he was kind of a, a one trick uh, pony. Like he he scores and that's about it. But the guy's got. I mean, he's got really good hands too. But I mean, I'm saying he's a very passing. complete player. Yeah. yeah. And we're, usually when you're talking about a complete player, you're talking about you know like a two way who's more offensive and defensive. Well, I don't know about his defensive game, but he's very complete on the offensive side. He can pass, he can score, mm -hmm. he does all of that. So um, I don't know that Tavares is as, as much of a playmaker as Panarin is. He is, but he is. He's, he's I guess also, another guy that I, I the but, goal scoring stands out. I but think is Panarin really is. is a very similar player, but he's a winger. Mm -hmm. Tavares is a center, which right. I think is a little bit more valuable. Sure, yeah. Uh, but uh, if, if we can't get couldn't get Tavares, right. and if we can get Panarin, mm -hmm. I think that would be phenomenal. The Sharks are already deep up the middle. Right. So I don't think we would necessarily need a center. However, to get Panarin, yeah. this is the this is the problem. So we put up a Twitter poll, and we also put up a Facebook poll. Um, similar polls, but not quite. Um, basically, who would you give up <laughs> to yeah. get Panarin? Who would you have to give up? Columbus is going to want a top six forward. Yep. They're going to want probably some picks and probably some prospects yeah. to kind of cover all their bases yeah. for for losing a top guy. And again, I don't know the source or how reliable the source, but that's that seems to be like the cookie cutter ask for uh, you know a top level player like that is a top six roster player, a top prospect, and your first. And fortunately, the Sharks have all that. And they have don't a, have a first round pick next round. Well, for next, next draft. Yeah, for the, the one after. after. We do have a first, in other words. But but that, would Doug Wilson want to give up another first round pick? Okay. Uh, if if you're getting Panarin? If you're getting Panarin and you can sign him? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. If you can't, if there's no guarantee, then if, I don't yeah, think so. No, it would have to be conditional that he signs. Just like they did with, with Evander Kane. Kane, yes. And quite frankly, again, if you look at, oh, oh, we're giving up all of our first round picks. Okay, great. You you draft a guy in the first round and you hope that he becomes the player that Panarin is. You hope that he becomes that guy. Why not just get the guy, right? But the other problem is Sharks are doing so well in the, in the playoffs and mm -hmm. regular season and going to the playoffs and going yeah. deep that their first round pick isn't are, worth as much. They're yeah. getting to the over the 20s, yeah. into the 20, closer to 30. Right. So. 
I think it's worth it. Yeah. Like, you get to those rounds, like, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that was a second-round pick. Yeah. So, I think it's worth it. Yeah. And I think the way that drafts usually go is once you get past, like, pick 15, your your odds of making it to the NHL, just making it to the NHL, start mm-hmm. really declining. And if we're constantly picking those guys in the, you know, the 20-plus the slot in the draft, you know, it, it's, it's no wonder why we talked – previous episodes where we had Goldobin and we traded him away yep. and that was kind of the right thing to do I don't know that Goldobin's really done much of anything in Vancouver yet yes he's young yes he's got time to blossom but he's kind of a I think he's a one trick pony and that's probably his problem he's very good offensively but he can't play on the other end of the ice yeah. so in the NHL that kind of limits your playing ability right I mean you're on Vancouver who's probably just gonna be as terrible as they were last year and so they'll probably play him <laughs> anyway but yeah. still it's you're gonna see limited ice time mm-hmm. with that kind of uh play skit play right. skit. and so i know that in, in talking about kane earlier and and you're saying that the situation with kane and panarin was fairly similar if you wanted mm-hmm. to kind of speak to that yeah so kane was uh before he traded the sharks he was in the last year of his deal mm-hmm. and uh he was traded at the deadline to the sharks right and his value is a little bit different because um, it, he was seen as, uh, I don't know, he's kind of like seen as a troublemaker and, and wanted sure. out of Buffalo, and Buffalo wanted, didn't want him. It was mm-hmm. also his second trade in, in the last couple of years. But anyway, um, I mean, similar way, Panarin, now it's out that he doesn't want to be in Columbus. Right. The fans aren't going to take to that. Their star player saying, I don't want to stay here. Mm-hmm. Uh, trade me now or don't trade me until the deadline or whatever. So I don't think they're going to take too well to that. Yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong. No, you're probably not wrong. I think we've seen that situation in San Jose with a certain goaltender that we talked about last season, or (laughs) last last episode. That's true. Eddie the Eagle. Eddie the Eagle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, he was booed for a very long time. So I think think that's what's going to happen is... uh, Potentially. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, not to cut you off, but they had said, again, sources, who knows, but... They had said that that was one of the things that was on his mind about leaving. He was worried that he would be not taken in nicely, if even if he was still with the uh, the Blue Jackets for the remainder of the season, that the fans might not really take kindly to him. And especially if he goes to another team, every time he comes back in there, and I'm thinking, who who cares? Yeah, <laughs> like you're playing for another team. Who cares? But anyway, that that was uh, something he was considering. Was that players, hey, the fans yeah. might boo me? And yeah. Some players can handle it, yeah. some can't. So interesting. I don't know. Anyway. Maybe he's never been booed his entire life. Who knows? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, yeah. there's only a few years in the NHL, so and he played in the KHL for a number of years too. Yeah, but and I'm sure he was loved over there too. Yeah, very skilled player. So yeah. So um, so I think if if let's say he doesn't get traded and goes all the way to the trade deadline mm-hmm. and Columbus is out of playoffs and then they ship him out, his value is not going to be as high as it is right now, at least at, for the Columbus standpoint. So um, I don't. I could see the Sharks making a move or not making a move, yeah. uh, or wait until the deadline. But I definitely see Doug Wilson keeps mentioning that he's going to bring in a playmaker, a, yeah. uh, a difference maker, a difference maker. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could see Panarin as being one of those guys. Yeah. Um, I think he would line up in the Sharks, and I'll show you my cap friendly what I did earlier. Um, I basically I didn't want to do it, but I traded uh, Tomas Hurdle. Right. Um, uh, Roy and our second round pick, I believe. Mm-hmm. And the reason I had the second round pick, uh, I would almost make that a similar situation to what, what Evander Kane did or what they did with for Evander Kane, a mm-hmm. conditional first round pick. If Panarin ends up signing with the Sharks, conditional first right. round, you get that one instead. Mm-hmm. If not, then you get the second round pick since we don't have a first round pick for the next draft. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have Florida's second round pick, and I think they can go either way. Florida will probably finish less than standing, so it would be a better value yeah. pick. Yeah. Um, or maybe we trade both. Maybe we trade both our second round picks and say, here you go. Who knows? I don't know what Columbus would want. I don't know what other teams are offering. Mm-hmm. Um, they're obviously going to take the best deal for them. Yeah. Um, it would suck to see Hurdle go, but to me, Hurdle is a guy, he's a couple years younger, he's 24, he's still very young. Yeah. Um, but he's a guy who has a lot of potential and hasn't quite hit it. So maybe he does this year. Maybe he doesn't. Um, but overall, I think I'd like Panarin more than I would like Hurdle. I can see that. And I, I think Panarin's quite obviously the more um, offensively talented uh, between the, those two, Hurdle and, and Panarin. Um, 
I would I would just hate to lose Hurdle. It's nice having that center depth. And as much as um, Panarin would fit well with the Sharks, being that we don't have that many left wingers, and we, if you take a look at Cap Friendly, and the dedicated left wingers are <laughs> Sorensen and Evander Kane. We just picked up Kane. Yeah. Um, beyond that, it's Logan Couture is a center slash left wing. Everybody else is either a center or a right wing or a center slash right wing. <laughs> I think Hurdle's so, another one that they gets played a lot on the left wing. He, he, but he's he's shown us he up as a, a center. as a center and a right winger right. actually. Yeah. So yeah, it's that's not I guess not the position he would normally play. But they're basically forcing guys into that left wing role. Well. If you can get not just any left winger, but an Artemi Panarin at uh, at left wing, I mean mm-hmm. that's that's pretty massive. So he would fit very well with the team. I would just really hate to see a guy like Tomas Hurdle go, and I can understand it, and I would accept it, and I'd be happy to have Panarin on the team if it meant that that's who we have to let go. But I would really hate to see him go. Um, it's 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 really nice seeing his development when he first got on the team. And he scored that four goal game. <laughs> um, that to me was like, okay, this is the best we're ever going to see this guy. I, I feel for that night too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is the best we're ever going to see this guy, right? And he had the knee injuries, and I was a little concerned. But last season, he took a huge step forward, in my opinion. Definitely. And he was puck protecting very well. He's very hard to move off of the puck. I don't know. I would hate to see him go. At the same time, I just think Panarin is the better player. He has a better ceiling. He does fit on the left wing, whereas we are deep down the center already, and we're playing Hurdle, like you said. We're playing him on a wing uh, anyway, so it's not like he's our third-line center or anything. All so. right, if not Hurdle, who would you be? Oh, um, I, I, I mean, you have to think in Columbus's standpoint too. They're not right. going to take. They're not going to take Donskoy or or just you know yeah. a bottom six guy. Yeah, and if we look back at that poll, actually, you know, it's it's telling. Mm-hmm. You, you see the guys that you know that have the highest percentage, and I think it was um, LeBanc. Yeah, LeBanc. Uh, yeah. <laughs> throwback. Uh, yeah, so Le- LeBanc, he had the highest percentage. Well, I think that's telling in that LeBanc is kind of the guy that's lowest on the totem pole in terms of the skill level, and we should have made the poll who would you be willing to give up, not who would you be okay with giving up, because I think most people might be willing to give up a LeBanc if they thought it can get us uh, Artemi Panarin, but I don't know that most people would be willing to give up a Tomas Hurdle, because I think he was a lower percentage. Yeah. It was Hurdle, LeBanc, who else did you have on that, that poll? Uh, there was a third one. It wasn't Meyer. I forget who the third one was, but regardless, I think if you look at the percentages, the lowest percentage kind of tells you that's the higher skill player, and that's the guy that we don't want to lose but the guy that you're willing to lose in LeBanc isn't going to draw in Artemi Panarin on his own. You're right. going to have to add a lot more. And if it's a prospect, it's your best prospect, and not necessarily multiple prospects and multiple yeah. prospects or multiple picks. Or, you mm-hmm. know, so you're going to be giving up more uh, if you're adding a LeBanc versus adding like a hurdle. If you were to put Timo Meyer in there, you may have to take a little bit less because he's got a pretty high ceiling too. I'd rather keep Timo. Exactly. So if you want to keep Timo more, the other team might covet him more, in Mm -hmm. which case you have to give up less, right? But do we want to give up a Timo Meyer? Personally, no. I don't want to give up Hurdle. I don't want to give up Meyer. Let's go back to episode (laughs) one. Did we, or two, did we need to do anything? No. I, I keep looking at the players that we have and I don't want to give any of them up. Yes, Panarin would make the team better, but. It's not like we have all like a glaring hole anywhere where yeah. somebody's just no good. All of our players are good. Left wing is the only thing I can think of, which is why. And but we're filling in left wing with good players, so I don't know. I, I mean, I'll I'll take Panarin over any of the guys that we just named, right? I'll take him, no doubt. He's a phenomenal player, and seeing him alongside a guy like Thornton or a guy like Couture, even yeah. you know. Um, yeah. It could be, again, devastating. It could ruin teams, <laughs> right? Um, but it's just maybe it's maybe it's the, the um, what do you call it? Not nostalgia, but the, the that feeling, you know, that you've got with the all heart. these guys. You, the you heart. fall in love with the guys, yeah. especially ones that get drafted and, and yeah. into the system and the Sharks, and you grow up watching them, and mm-hmm. then you see them grow and and get better and better every year. It's, it's really hard to say goodbye to those yeah. guys. Yeah. It's very hard to say goodbye even to, I mean, the older guy, Patrick Marlowe. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Shark, Mr. right? Shark. We drafted him, and, and he came all the way up, and he just stayed with the team for that long. And that was tough, but, you know, these younger guys that have, you know, ceilings that are they haven't hit yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marlowe was kind of at his ceiling, and he was on the way down, and, okay, it makes sense, sure. But these guys that are still kind of, they have potential still. You know, you, you, you don't want to see them go. But, I mean, again, to bring in a talent like Artemi Panarin, 
you got to be willing to say goodbye. Yeah. And speaking of things that you should probably say goodbye to, um, <laughs> did you see the Ducks' third jersey? Yeah, I don't know if that was official or if it was leaked or what, but uh, it, let's take a look at this abomination <laughs> jersey. It's, they're throwing it back to their original jerseys, um, and the joke on Twitter <laughs> and all over social media is uh, the Sharks beat the Ducks so bad in the playoffs that they're bleeding teal because it's now all over their jersey. So you can see the jersey is... They're throwing it back to yeah. the old school logo from the movie, and that I'm cool with. I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with everything else. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's very '90s. I mean, coming from a team of teal, yeah, which is very '90s. Yeah. Um, I don't know. All right, I, well, what do you? What would you like to see as a Sharks third jersey? I don't know if they're going to unveil one this year or not, but yeah. Um, okay, so I know that they've got uh, the the screaming shark, the one that's um, screaming, I guess, like the shoulder uh, patch one. Uh, yeah, 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 the one that's on the 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 New Jersey's with the shoulder. On yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And it's like like leaping out and it's like roaring and everything. Yeah. They took the stick out of it, and I think I know why they took the stick out because the joke was that's the part of the stick that the sharks keep choking on. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so I think they they took the stick out probably for partially on that reason I'm but sure. um, I could see that being on like the main crest like the the yelling shark as a third because they've been introducing that you know in the shoulder patches and they've been doing you know other things like stickers and that kind of stuff so I think they're warming people up for it and I think that'll probably be what the third is now what color probably black armor again because they just keep doing that as yeah. their third um, I wouldn't mind it being something completely different and totally outrageous <laughs> all love Go the pumpkins! Love I love the, the orange. orange. Yeah, I do too. I like the orange. It's, it's good. different. Um, Maybe not for sharks, but I mean the ducks had a jersey like that. Yeah, they had an orange yeah, jersey. We need to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and it was kind of funny because I always thought like they're duck hunt jerseys. Like, <laughs> why would they be hunting themselves? That's stupid. I mean, they're obnoxious. <laughs> they they really stand out. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think then uh, for for the sharks there? Me personally, yeah. my favorite right. logo the yeah. sharks have had is was the shoulder patch in the original jersey, mm. which is up here. It's uh, it's got the. I don't know if you're gonna get that in the I was shot. Say, are you even in frame? You can take it down. It's okay. Here, I'll bring it down, <laughs> and you can see it on the side. Um, it's the yeah. fin logo, and it's a lot different than what the new one is, yeah. which is a little bit more yeah, sharper. I'll bring that one down. Um, I think this. It would be a big round patch in the middle. That's the one he's talking about right there. The big the big circle patch with the fin in the middle right here, I think uh -huh. would look sweet and yeah. different. And it would definitely be a third jersey rather mm -hmm. than just different colors with the same. Logo. Now, would you go with black, teal, some sort of... Ooh. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the old school look with the stripes. I'm kind of a traditionalist, I guess, when it comes okay. to jerseys. Sure. Um, I know the players don't really like it as much because it's a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd be open to an all black jersey with that logo yeah. on it to be completely different. Nice. Well, and the reason we were talking about this, not just to slam on the Ducks, but again, we disrespected the Ducks right. last time. We'll do yeah. it again. I don't care. <laughs> um, uh, we're, we're, this is kind of our little segment we're calling uh, Swag and Tell. So, yeah. um, and this will actually be our fresh catchphrase as well. I'll just let you guys know beforehand, then we'll get into the rest of it. But uh, yeah. Be swag and Tell. Hashtag. Well, I think it's going to go this way, but it's okay. It should go this way. Does it really? Yeah, it does. Anyway, yeah, so hashtag swag and tell. Um, so that's that's what we, we'd like you guys to share with us. Um, you don't have to say anything necessarily. You can just give us a little bit about the, the piece of swag that you like. If it's a jersey, if it's a bobble, if it's a hat, if it's, uh, I don't know, a sign stick maybe. Yeah. yeah. Anything, anything that you have that's, you know, shark memorabilia. Send us your picture and hashtag it. Yeah, just just put it out there for us to see. And, you know, maybe if it's if it's a really good one, you know, we'll, we'll share it. We've been known to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, in any case, I think, what was, what was the next thing we wanted to talk about? I and mean, we had jerseys, but... Uh, oh, uh, our, our friend Joe uh, Demartini, actually, right. he had commented on one of our videos saying something about the guy on the left, and he, we went to the Detroit game. Right. And, okay, so Aaron had talked about the Detroit game. Can you just recap on that game again? Uh, it was, I can't remember which year exactly it was, but the Sharks beat Detroit finally in the playoffs. I think it was the second round. They got to the third round. It was 2011. 2011, there you go. And... Uh, um, it felt like the Stanley Cup Finals. It right. felt like uh, they finally got over the hurdle of beating Detroit because they kept getting beat by them mm -hmm. in those recent years. Mm -hmm. 
and it felt like they were on to the next level, and then they went on and got swept by right. Chicago the next round, who right. then went on to win the cup. Yeah. So, go ahead. So, um, Joe had commented saying, I went to game seven against Detroit mm -hmm. uh, with the, the guy on the left, that's me, um, and I actually still have, and I found it, the, <laughs> the towel <laughs> that they gave away, and... Um, it's yeah, it's pretty sweet. Old. So, yeah, was that? <laughs> seven years uh, old. Whatever. <laughs> so, game seven, round two, 2011, beat Detroit. Um, and what's the other thing I love about this towel? You'll know. It's orange. It's orange. <laughs> so, yeah, um, just that's one of my, um, I wouldn't say favorite pieces of swag, but it was right. it was a good one, you know, at the time. Uh, this was, I definitely lost my voice during this game, and Joe knows exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, just thought I'd bring that one up. That was uh, that was a good one for me yeah. in terms of the swag. Uh, I think uh, you've got a bobble in particular, maybe that you liked. Uh, I have an Owen Nolan bobblehead, and I honestly cannot even remember where I got it from. Um, <laughs> but it looks nothing like Owen Nolan. <laughs> I think they've gotten a lot better in the years of making them look better, yeah. like the players. But this is like it's such a generic face, like. Here's a bobblehead with an Owen Nolan jersey on it. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's one of my favorite bobbleheads, I guess. It's your favorite because it doesn't look like Owen Nolan, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's probably the oldest one that I have, oldest bobblehead. Nice, I have. very cool. Yeah. So actually, uh, before I get to my last piece of uh, swag from Swag and Tell, mm -hmm. um, I'm, it's story time. So sure. I want to tell because my last piece of swag actually uh, is is part of the story. So, and it's a short story, but um, it was, every once in a while at oh, I used to where I used to work, I would ride my bike back and forth to work. It was actually 12 and a half mile ride. So uh, Joe, actually, the, the guy with the, the towel, um, he used to ride that along with me. He was actually part of the story too. He's uh, riding behind me. Mm -hmm. And so we're dri riding our bikes on this trail and uh, you know just just going and going and I have something on and I'll show you what I had in a minute. <laughs> but um, so I'm, I'm riding and I just, I'm going this way and somebody comes back this way and I look up and I look at him and I kind of just do this. And it's like, I know that guy. And I'm just, and I kind of look back down and I'm going like, where do I, and it hit me. I'm like, that's Joe Thornton. <laughs> and I look back again, like you really rode right by him. I just rode right by him. I look back again and I look back to see so I don't crash. And I look back one more time and I'm yelling, that's Joe Thornton. <laughs> and I said, I don't know why I didn't say Joe Thornton or like Thornton or whatever, but I was saying like, that's Joe Thornton. That's Joe Thornton. <laughs> I'm freaking out. And I see Joe look back, like Joe Thornton, not my buddy Joe. Joe Thornton looks back as he's right and he's like, <laughs> he was like, yep, yeah, I am, you know? And uh, it was just, just one of those times where I was like, oh my God. And so um, I happened to be wearing the last piece of swag. Uh, I don't know if you want to cut to Aaron real quick and then uh, come back to me. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. So I'm, I'm wow. riding with my, my bike helmet on like this. Like, that's Joe Thornton. <laughs> So uh, this he is my last was, piece of swag. He's probably already laughing at he you. Was, yeah, he probably already was laughing at me. <laughs> and I realized idiot. that I'm still wearing this and I don't care. Um, so actually there was, I think it was probably his trainer or something was behind him or something. Oh, yeah. And it was, um, I don't know, it was some Asian dude. And he was like riding behind him. And Joe, my buddy Joe, goes, that's not Joe Thornton. <laughs> like, some Asian guy. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> the, the first one. <laughs> It's like, are you serious? Yeah, so it was uh, It was just really cool um, nice. little encounter. And is this thing actually moving with my chain? Yeah, it's it is. Cool. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Well done, Sharks. Well done making this thing. This thing's pretty old, too. It's, it's a long time. He it didn't looks, even have his beard. It looks like it's falling then. apart a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. I should probably take it off. You're going to be okay. covered in nice. That's yeah, okay. Cool. I'm going to live with it. <laughs> it's what you do as a Sharks fan, man. You just, you deal. <laughs> That's what I do. I deal with this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, gosh, I guess that brings us to the end of episode number five. That's it. Yeah. Man. Okay, so next time they see us, we're going to have to have another another hand when we're doing this. Yeah. Goodness. Maybe, maybe we'll share hands. We'll try, yeah. We'll do, I'll do three. It'll be three. We're, we're, we're even here. Yeah. Even Steven. There we go. No one here is named Steven. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And thank you. Like us. Subscribe to us. Share with all your friends. All that jazz. Uh, we're hoping to talk sharks all summer long and going into the season strong. Very good. Okay. Well, hey, we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. 
And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.